Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and this week we're having a Minecraft birthday party for Jed complete with slime balls and a TNT cake that he wanted and some grass blocks. Can you believe that he is turning six? I started my website the week that he was born so that means the website is also turning six. Let's start with the grass blocks. To make them all you'll need is rice bubbles and milk chocolate. Temper the chocolate and pour it over the rice bubbles. If you don't know how to temper chocolate, just search for reared and temper and watch the chocolate secrets video and it will explain it all there. Once it's all mixed together, tip it into a cube silicon mold, filling up each section and press down firmly using the back of your spoon. Take some coconut and push it down on top of each block. To make your coconut green, all you need to do is stir through some liquid green food colouring and it will go like this. Once they are covered, leave them in the fridge to set. Then to get them out of the mould, just pull the silicon away on each side and then push up from the bottom. Grab the top and wiggle it a little bit until it comes loose. And there you have super easy grass blocks. For those of you who are wondering like I was if you could make it just by pushing it into a rectangular tin and then cutting it, I found that no matter what knife I used it just kind of crumbled as I tried to cut it so I couldn't get neat blocks. It's still yummy but it's not quite the right look. Now on to the TNT but first I'll let Jed show you his Minecraft house. This is my secret house. <laughs> so when you open my door You'll see, like, well, this is a very small place. But when you shut the door, it reveals behind you what is my house. This is my bedroom, and I'll show you my other room. This is downstairs. And my kitchen and everything. And can you show me what TNT does? Not inside your house. I know, I can't. I won't do it inside my house. So there's a mod that you can get. It has TNT and it's a pretty big mod. It has every type of TNT. It has like massive TNT that makes like a volcano. Do you have that mod? No. That's a lot of TNT. Yeah. Whoa. So that's what TNT does. Now to make the cake, you'll need to bake my rich chocolate cake in two trays. And the recipe and video for that are all on the howtocookthat.net website and I'll link to that below. I like baking them in trays instead of tins because then they bake much faster which means they don't dry out on the edges and it's beautiful and moist the whole way through. While that is baking make your ganache by pouring the cream over the chocolate and then microwave it in 30 second bursts until it is smooth and there are no lumps of chocolate left. Then you want to cover that in plastic wrap and leave it to cool down to room temperature. To make your chocolate buttercream, you'll need butter, cocoa, and icing sugar. Just whip those together until it's smooth and fluffy. It's really easy. Instead of plain simple syrup today, I'm using strawberry jam, and then adding to that a tablespoon of water, and you wanna heat that in the microwave for one minute, then stir it together and leave it to cool. Once your cakes are completely cold, then level them using the top of your tin as a guide so you get it nice and straight. Trim off the edges on two sides to make sure they're straight going up and down, and then cut two squares. I'm making my squares 15 centimeters or six inches, and this size cake will serve 32 people if you give each person half a stick of dynamite, which is quite a big serve of cake. Kids will probably eat about a third of a stick. Fold the square in half and then cut two of those from the top half of the cake. Once you've finished doing that with this one, you want to repeat that with the other one. Place some buttercream onto the baseboard and then add two of your smaller rectangles to the bottom to make a square. 
smother that in the jam syrup and this just keeps the cake super moist and it's a good idea if you're not eating the cake on the same day that you're making it. Cover that in an even layer of buttercream all over it trying to make it level and then add the other layers with jam syrup and buttercream in between each one. Add the ganache to the leftover buttercream and mix it together. Pour that on top of the cake and allow it to overflow down the sides. Spread it out making it as smooth and cube-like as you can. Then you want to put that in the fridge for about an hour to firm up. Add another thin layer of frosting over the top and the sides to smooth out any imperfections and get all the sides and edges straight. Now carefully place your red fondant over the top of the cake and then immediately press it to the cake around the top so that it doesn't stretch and tear. Squeeze each side together at the corners and then use scissors to trim it off fairly close to where you want it. The scissors will help seal that join shut. Then just use a knife to shave off a little bit extra if you need it. If you have a fondant smoother, you can use that here to flatten the sides. If you don't, you can just use non-stick baking paper, put it on two opposite sides, and then use two books and press gently with each hand. Trim the excess fondant off at the base, and then make sure your corners are sharp by gently pushing the top edge towards your fondant smoother or your book and baking paper, depending what you're using. Use a ruler to mark out four equal sections, and then push the ruler into the fondant to make a straight indent. Do the same on top to join up with the lines that you have made on each side. I like to use a ruler that's just for cake decorating, it doesn't get used for anything else, and then you can wash it in the dishwasher each time after you've used it. Once you've done all of these indents, you should end up with 16 squares on top. Take some black powdered food colour and a dry paintbrush and paint in the indents along that line. Put some cooking oil on your finger and rub some extra black around the joins. You want to do the same on the corners and across the top to give it that outlined cartoony look. The top of the cake looks a bit like a Rubik's Cube at the moment, but don't worry, we will turn it into TNT. Add a strip of white around the outside of the cake and then use your ruler to straighten it up. Print and cut out the TNT letters and then flip it over on some fondant so that it's backwards. Cut around the template and I'll put a copy of that on the website so you can just download that and print it. And I have this fondant on some non-stick baking paper and you'll need to do that for the next step. Remove the excess black fondant and then straighten up the letters. Just use the ruler to make sure they're all in place. Then use your finger to add a little bit of water to each letter. Blot that with paper towel so you don't have too much water on there. You don't want them to slide off. And then with it still on the paper, apply it to the cake. Gently press it to fix the letters onto the white and then peel off the baking paper. Repeat that on each side and then cut yourself 16 squares of light grey. Add them to each square right in the corner. Then you can use a ruler to straighten up each row. Now add some smaller squares of grey around the TNT letters. There's no right or wrong place of where to put these, just put them somewhere different on each side. Then add the darker grey squares across the top of the cake, again right in the corner. Use a straw to cut a circle out of the top of each block and then use a fondant extruder to make a long snake of black. You can get these fondant extruders super cheap on eBay or Amazon. I've had mine for many years now so it's a bit faded. Roll one end of your black to a point and add it into one of the holes. Reach it across to the opposite corner and connect those two. To stop them from sitting flat, you can add some rolled up baking paper just under the fondant there. Continue to add them crisscrossing across the cake, supporting each one with the baking paper. We don't want just a plain silver board, so let's cover that in green squares. Jed wants to help me put those on. He is always so super helpful. He's such a cutie. Now that's our cake done. 
Now for the slime balls. All you need to do to make those is make up some jelly or jello using half the amount of water it says on the packet. And pour that into a sphere ice cube tray, put the lid on and place it in the fridge to set. And voila, you have green slime balls. For his party, we went to a trampoline center with a group of school friends and his big brothers, of course. And then it was time for the party food and the cake. Happy birthday to you. Oh, oh. Yeah. One more. One more. I recommend eating the other side of the cake. Yeah. In our house, on the actual day of your birthday, you get breakfast and presents in bed. And we had a bit of a surprise for Jed on his birthday. Jed, happy birthday. Big boy, six years old. <laughs> Love, dad and mum. P.S. Look out of the bathroom window. Can you see something? Yes. What is it? A trampoline! <laughs> yeah. Subscribe to How to Cook That for more crazy sweet creations. Here's a link to the recipe, some more Minecraft cakes for you, and here's the latest video. Make it a great week, and I'll see you on Friday.